Hello and welcome to the Salt and Light Bible Study Series. My name is Pastor Quincy and I will be leading the study of God's Word today. It's an honor and a privilege to be with you guys today. Let's start with a word of prayer and we'll get right into the Word of the Lord. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, we praise you, we magnify your name. Lord, I pray that I will decrease and that you would increase. I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable in your sight, Lord God. I pray that someone will hear your word and say, what must I do to be saved, Lord? I pray that someone will hear your word and that they would want to know you more, Lord. So get your glory. We love you and we praise you. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. At this time, we are going into the study of God's word. Again, it's an honor and a privilege to be with you guys to share God's word today. Our title for today is Believers Praising God. Believers Praising God. And our scripture is coming from Acts chapter 2, verses 32 through 47. And the scripture starts off by saying, God raised Jesus from the dead. And we are all witnesses of this. If you know anything about Acts, the second chapter is where the day of Pentecost was. And not only that, the Holy Spirit was then given to the people. And they spoke in tongues and people were like, man, uh, they're drunk or something is going on. They're crazy. Uh, but then there were others when they started speaking in these tongues, they began to hear their native language. And in that, multitudes of people came to know the Lord. And now to set the scene, the people that are now ushered unto this place and the scripture goes unto just how now the Holy Spirit is giving them insight and understanding on not only what he called them to do, but what their purpose was and how he's calling them to launch out into deep waters, launch out to do service, launch out to serve and to edify the body of Christ. And so my question for you today is, what is God calling you to do? And have you received this Holy Spirit? God is calling us to be his witness. If you know anything about God's witness within the scripture, because it says God raised Jesus from the dead and we are all witnesses of this. A witness is a martyr. That witness is a martyr to prove the strength and genuineness of faith through Jesus Christ. And some have undergone death. Some have died. If you remember Stephen, who was stoned to death, it said that he looked up as they were stoning him and he saw the glory of God in heaven. Sometimes God is calling us to be a martyr. Sometimes, hey, we have different parts of Asia and Africa where people are being martyred and killed every day for the gospel. There may be a time where the world and where we live now, where we will have to give our lives for the gospel. But now some of us, we just need to die in the place that we're in now, not physically, but there's some things that need to die in your life so that you can walk closer with Christ. Amen. And so within that, God is just calling us to be his representative in this earth. And sometimes it's going to cost us our life or sometimes it's going to cost some things. Are you ready to take up your cross and follow him truly? God is also calling us within this scripture. He says in verse 33, now he is exalted to the place 
of the highest honor in heaven at God's right hand. Question, and I'm not sure who this is for, but what is the position of Jesus in your life? Does he have a position? Uh, is he in your life today? Is he exalted? Is he in the place of honor in your life? I'm reminded of Isaiah, who it says in the year that King Uzziah died, he saw the Lord. See, sometimes some things got to die for you to see the Lord. Sometimes it's us. Sometimes it's relationships, right? And so God within this, it says that he saw God in a different light because of whatever that was in the way, whatever that was hindering his sight had to die. He was able to see God differently. And so I don't know who you are. I don't know what you're going through right now. But God is saying there's some things in your life that need to die. There's some things in your life that you need to do away from so that you can see him clearly. So he can be exalted. So that he can be in the place of honor in your life. Amen. The scripture goes on to say, and the father, as he had promised, gave him the Holy Spirit and poured it upon us just as you see and hear today. My next question is, have you seen and heard the Holy Spirit working in your life? The Holy Spirit is here to work and to do some things in your life. Have you allowed the Holy Spirit to do something in your life? I remember as a young man uh, being... Um, and, and not really knowing the direction that I should go and calling on the Holy Spirit just to take over my life. And from that day forward, he has been a vital, important uh, person in my life, guiding me, giving me peace in the midst of the storms. So I just encourage you today, call on the Holy Spirit, call on them now just to take over your life. You're tired of where you're going. You are weary. You are worn down. Allow the Holy Spirit to be that guiding, stable per part of your life to lead you in that place. He wants to be a part of your life today. I don't know who you are. I know my time is running out. But God is saying, call on the Holy Spirit now. Call on him now to lead you and guide you so that you're able to be led into that place that he's called you to be in. You're tired of that place. Allow the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you. Next, Jesus needs to be ultimate in your life. It goes on to say in verse 35, until I humble your enemies, this is uh, taken from uh, the Psalms, making them a footstool under your feet. So verse 36 says, so let everyone in Israel know for certain that God has made this Jesus whom crucified to be Lord and Messiah. There it is again. Have you made Jesus Lord and Messiah over your life? Have you recognized Jesus as Messiah, as the anointed one? Is he ultimately or is he ultimate in your life today? It says Peter's words pierced their hearts in verse 37. And they said to him and to other apostles, brothers, what should we do? And you're asking that question, what should I do today? Peter replied, each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins. There it is. Repent, turn to God, and be baptized. Now, baptism, and this is, this is something that I gathered. When you go under the water, it's about coming up and having a new life. Repentance means that, it means to turn away from, right? Turn a, away from something and do something new. 
right? And so when God is calling you to repent, when God is calling you to be baptized, he's calling you to be new and to turn away from what you used to do and do something new. Amen. And that's what repentance is. Repent means just to say, God, I'm sorry. Um, I repent. I'm leaving behind whatever this thing is. I'm leaving it at your feet and I'm walking in a new place. Are you ready to walk in a new place today? It goes on to say, then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You can't receive the gift of the Holy Spirit and you're still walking in the same mess. You're still walking in that same place that you thought was okay. You haven't repented. You haven't turned fully to God. And some of us, we're trying to figure out why, ha why haven't I been able to leave this place? It's because you're still comfortable in that place. You still want to be there. God is saying, I want to take the very taste of that thing out of your spirit today. Are you ready for God to take the taste of that thing out of your spirit today? It has no value to you. It has put you in harm's way. It's really trying to kill you. And God is saying today, if you just allow him, he wants to turn your life around today. Will you allow him to turn your life around today? Amen. In verse 41, it just goes on and it just talks about, and those who believe Peter were baptized and added to the church that day, about 3,000 in all. It says the believers formed a community. Believers, when are we ready to form a community? Everybody else got their community. I'm not going to go through all of the adjectives and names of all the different communities, right? But when are we going to have our own community? When are we going to have our community where we're able to support each other, feed each other? Not only that, feed others with the gospel of Christ. My time is running out. Verse 42 says, all the believers devoted themselves to the apostles teachings and fellowship and sharing meals. We need to fellowship. We need to share meals with others. How do people know that we're followers of Christ if we're not sharing anything? The only thing we're sharing is words, but where are where the meals at? Where, 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 I, I love seeing um, the ministries outside sharing meals and doing things for those that are less, less fortunate. Um, but this, these are the things that God is calling us to do, and the Holy Spirit will lead us in that place. I got a minute left. Let's jump down to verse 46. It says... They worshiped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity. Verse 47 says, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. There's a recipe here, and the recipe has not changed. Preacher, you trying to go out there and get souls on your own merit. You're trying to uh, do all these things to bring in souls into the kingdom. But here's your recipe right here. Here's your recipe right here. Your recipe is generosity, sharing meals. All right. While also praising God, enjoying um, the goodwill of all the people, right? Collective faith. When are we going to get to a place where we have a collective faith? There's some things, some mountains, some obstacles that can be moved, but it's only if we come together with collective faith. Well, that's my time. I hope that you enjoyed this nugget of scripture that we just unpacked. Uh, of course, there's more. So I encourage you to um, use your time wisely in these hours just to study God's word. Um, you might say today you don't know the Lord and the pardon of your sins. 
Let's have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We magnify your name. I just pray in the name of Jesus that if there's someone that does not know you and the pardon of their sins, that they would uh, want to know you now. I pray in the name of Jesus that your Holy Spirit will just set their life ablaze. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will fall afresh on them now. I pray that you will get the glory, honor, and the praise. Lord, we love you and we praise you. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. At this time, you may also say, hey, I want to give. Um, you'll see instructions and address to our church. Uh, you can either give by tidally. Uh, you can drop it off um, at our church uh, site as well. You'll see the address again right there. Um, I would also encourage you, um, again, to use tidally. Use those different resources. And uh, God will bless you. Uh, Vernon Park is a, a great a seed to sow into and um, we also ask you to follow us on um, Facebook we're on Instagram and uh, like us and subscribe to us on YouTube uh, be blessed in the Lord and allow the Holy Spirit to take over your life amen go in peace <music>